Yo, what's going on, guys? Crispy Flakes here. So, Shams just literally released a grocery list of different NBA trade rumors and happenings around the league. And uh, for today's video, we are going to go through all those. So, you know, typically as of late, I've been having like 2K in the background. There's literally so much to talk about here that uh, I can't just have some 2K gameplay. Like, we gotta go through stats, teams, all that good stuff. So, yeah, just to give you guys an example, um, this is pretty much everything we have to go through. And that's released at the making of this video. So, there definitely could be more that's uh going on but uh yeah before we get going on this video if you guys don't mind you know leaving a like and subscribe if you're the channel if you guys are enjoying these nba talk type of videos greatly appreciated so yes um some of these we are going to talk about a little bit more than others because some we've kind of you know talked about so much that being like ben simmons and stuff man but um let's start off with ben simmons so the knicks lakers t wolves blazers kings pacers and Cavs are among the teams interested in ben simmons per shams Alrighty, Knicks. Do I like that as a fit? It's fine. It's fine. I, I mean, they're twelve and fifteen on the season, so I could see where maybe they'd want to like pull off something. You know, guys like Kemba and Evan Fournier have not exactly panned out for the team. Uh, I would say I, I like that trade if it's for like the right player. I mean, quite frankly, I feel like a guy like Kemba Walker. Yes, he is uh, kind of appears to be washed up, but. Um, I think it'll be like a low risk move for the 76ers to get back. Um, now they do have Tyrese Maxey already, who I think's been playing really good basketball. So yeah, I don't know if it's like the greatest. Um, as far as the Lakers go, I mean, if the Lakers were to get Ben Simmons, that means they probably are giving up Russell Westbrook, and Russell Westbrook is far from being able to fix the issues of the Philadelphia 76ers. Now I will say, from the 76ers standpoint. You could probably argue, probably, that the 76ers are better with Russell Westbrook as opposed to no Russell Westbrook and no Ben Simmons. So you might be able to have that discussion. But once again, I don't think it's the best fit, uh, really, for either side, man. Uh, then you got the uh, T-Wolves. Now, the T-Wolves I actually like quite a bit here. Um, I've been talking about forever about the potential of a D'Lo, Ben Simmons type of swap. Now, D'Lo on the season, 19.6 assists, 4 rebounds per game. You know, up front look like good numbers, but as you can see, his efficiency at 38% field goal percentage and 33% from three, not the greatest. Um, I feel like going to a more... Uh, stabilized franchise and having Joel and being stuff like that on the 76ers would be a huge benefit. And um, this team already has a lot of decent scoring as is. So you add, you know, Ben Simmons to bring the chemistry together. Like, I still think that's one of the better trades available for both sides. But uh, yeah, man. Um, and then what else we got here? We, got, we also got the uh, Blazers. We made an entire video talking about that. So I'm not going to talk too much about that. But we know Damian Lillard wants guys like Ben Simmons on the team. So yeah, just to like save the legacy of Damian and the Portland Trail Blazers, you might do it just for that reason, right? Um, we also got the Kings. Uh, the Kings definitely have guys to... Tr where are they at, man? Where, where are the Kings at? 11 and 16? Actually, a little better than I thought, man. Uh, a little bit better than I thought. But yeah, another team that uh, could probably desperately use a big time move. Now, if they're doing this, you're probably looking as some sort of De'Aaron Fox type of trade because we all know they already got Davion Mitchell, they got Tyrese Halliburton, and uh, those guys are not enough to trade for Ben Simmons, but De'Aaron Fox, you have the big-time name. Now, am I doing it personally? I still like De'Aaron Fox a lot. If I'm the 76ers, I'm saying yes every single time. If I'm the Kings, um, you know, I might be, uh, see what offers are out there if you are looking to trade a guy like De'Aaron Fox. Uh, you got the Pacers, also made a video about that. There's a ton of different, you know, trade assets that the Pacers have available to them to trade for Ben Simmons. Um, I think a team, you know, going into a rebuild probably should not trade for a 25-year-old. Now, if they're able to pull this off without trading any of their big-time pieces like Sabonis or somebody like that, then maybe they're looking to do, like, more of a, re a retool instead of a rebuild. So, that's probably the only perspective, uh, perspective you have out of that. And then you have the Cleveland Cavaliers. If I'm the Cavaliers, I am not doing this at all. Um, they have a good thing going over there. And I am not giving up all these young pieces to get Ben Simmons that they don't even really need. Because I want Darius Garland to be the primary ball handler. And uh, you're guy Mobley and stuff. Like, I just... Ben Simmons don't make much sense over on the Cleveland Cavaliers. Unless, you know, he doesn't mind playing the small forward spot or something like that. And uh, if the trade's right. But I'm not giving up too much assets to get him at that point. Okay, next up. We have the Celtics, the Bell Boston Celtics, who are currently 13 and 14 on the season, uh, are interested in trading away Dennis Schroeder. So Dennis Schroeder on the season, 18 points, five assists per game, four rebounds, uh, really good overall numbers. He's 28, obviously, but he's on that one-year contract that's only about like, isn't like $8 million or something like that? It's a very small contract. Let me actually pull up Dennis Schroeder real quick here. Um, 
I think that's I think that's a very smart move, man. This is definitely a circumstance, you know, where they yeah he's on a one one year five point eight million dollar contract. So this is definitely a case where he's putting up good numbers. The Celtics are not looking to be a team that uh, is all that great this season. I've been saying forever that it's a transition year for them. So uh, yeah, the one year contract of Schroeder. If you don't think he's the point guard of your future, uh, sell him. While he's putting up good numbers, man. Like like you know, get some assets back for him, right? So um, I would say. As far as like team fit, like who would I actually like to see Schroeder go to? Um, I was looking through the teams here, and I really think the Utah Jazz make a lot of sense, man. The Utah Jazz make a lot of sense. The reason is because, you know, Mike Conley on this season, it's been fine at 14 points, 5 assists per game. But uh, I like the idea, you know, of Schroeder coming onto this team and being a six man with Jordan. Well, I guess only technically one guy can be a six man, but coming off the bench, um, still keeping Mike Conley on the squad. But having Jordan Clarkson and Dennis Schroeder off the bench would be the best. Probably like backcourt bench duo in NBA history because Schroeder is actually notoriously a really good backup player too. Uh, so I like the idea of that a lot. Now, as far as getting him over there, you're probably looking up giving up, up like some draft picks or something like that to do so. Uh, matching the salary will not be difficult because of the small contract. So love the idea of that. Just get, you know, get, get, get some draft picks for uh, Schroeder. Nothing wrong with that whatsoever if you are a fan of the Boston Celtics. So that I do like quite a bit. Uh, next up, we do have... There has been an increase in optimism of Kyrie Irving returning to the Nets. So this one's not really a trade talks, just more so things that are going on. Um, and yeah, I haven't really read too much about this story. So I don't know if he's had like a change of heart as far as how he wants to handle the vaccination. If there's been some new rule changes about that. Um, but yeah, adding Kyrie Irving back to your basketball team. You know, you might, you might argue and still say that Kyrie is not a great fit next to James Harden and Kevin Durant. Uh but he's still a great basketball player and he's not i don't think he's gonna make them a worse team so yes um i really just want to see Kyrie get back to playing basketball he's just like he's showtime man you know he's fun to watch and everything so uh and then you know yet again too there is also there's been talks of not really talks but people have been talking about you know Kyrie getting traded over the 76 just for ben simmons because ben simmons fits more on the nets and Kyrie could be a type of you know Allen iverson type of player for the uh, 76ers i know 76 fans probably don't want to hear that comparison but uh I don't know, man, just stuff I was kind of, you know, reading around the internet and everything, so, yes. All right, next up, we have the Pistons are drawing interest for Jeremy Grant. So, Jeremy Grant has just been listed as out for the next six weeks, which I'm personally, I mean, the Pistons are already the worst team in the NBA, so it's not like we're losing somebody that's, like, making us better because our team's trash this season. So, uh, me personally speaking, you know, Jeremy Grant has put up good numbers at 20 points, five rebounds per game, um... Now, his efficiency has not been great this year, but, you know, when it comes down to Jeremy Grant, he's 27 years of age. Um, he's got a fantastic contract next year. It's going to be expiring uh, on one year, about $20 million a season type of deal. So, you know, I, I know Jeremy said that he wanted to play for the Detroit Pistons, and I'm happy for his loyalty and his wanting to play for this franchise. It does not happen that often. Uh, but also, I recognize that Jeremy Grant does not fit our long-term rebuild. He doesn't. I don't care who you, you know, who you are. He, he does not fit a long-term rebuild for the Detroit Pistons, and, um... If he does, if he does stay along in the long term, he's going to be required to get a lot of money, you know, a big, huge contract. And uh, yeah, man, I'm just at the point where it's like our team's already the worst in the NBA. Let's get some assets back for the dude. Let him go contend somewhere. I'm cool with it. I'd be happy for Jeremy Grant, and I'd be happy to, uh, you know, get some additional value, you know, over to the Detroit Pistons. Now, as far as teams that are interested, uh, the latest report that I read was, you know, one thing the Los Angeles Lakers. Um, the Lakers do need some more forward help on their team, which is weird saying because they have Anthony Davis and LeBron James. Uh, but I'm still team, you know, AD at the center position. Put Jeremy at the four with LeBron at the three. Like, defensively speaking, watch out NBA. Um... And me personally, I would be cool, you know, with some draft picks and THT, something like that. Uh, I don't think it would be too much to get Jeremy Grant over on the Lakers. And the other team interested, which I think is also a perfect fit, is the uh, Portland Trailblazers. Um, they also have a lot of good young talent out for any Simons. You got uh, Nazir Little. So, you know, some ways to get it done. Now, if you're the Pistons, don't trade for, you know, old aging players. That would not make any sense. Um, only train them away if you're getting draft picks. Or uh, young players out of it that have good potential. So that's where you may. We'll get Seiko Dumboy. Isn't he on the Lakers again, man? There we go. That'd be a Pistons thing to do. Okay, next up, the Hawks are believed to be open to trade Cam Reddish. Um, opposing teams are under the impression that Atlanta is seeking a first rounder for him. Okay, so let's pull up where we have the Hawks, man. They are 13 13 on the season. So, yes, uh, right now we do have Cam Reddish, who is averaging, where's he at, man? 11 points, three rebounds, two assists per game. Uh, on about 22 minutes per game let's go to his per 36 just because that gives you know a little bit of an indication of maybe what he could do as a starter but then again i don't think skylar Mays is dropping 27 points a game but maybe man 
Uh, where are we at? Cam Reddish. So per 36, 18 points, four rebounds per game. Um, you know, Cam Reddish to me, I still like the comparison of him being like, you know, a potential Paul George in the future. Um, I do agree that for his development, uh, the Hawks are probably not like the greatest fit out there. Um, he's 22. So, you know, man, it's got a few seasons under his belt, but as far as team fit, you definitely want him to go to more of a rebuilding team. And, uh, I would say looking at all the teams here listed, I mean, take your pick, man. You know, if you're the Indiana Pacers, I know you probably don't want to trade because that's the thing. It's like, if you are a team that's going into a rebuild or are rebuilding, you don't want to trade a first round pick, you know, for a player. You just don't want to do that. So at that point, you got to look at teams that already have a good established team they might need that next kind of like you know promising dude so the portland trailblazers yet again could be interesting um maybe the sacramento kings i suppose there's definitely some fits out there that i think do make a lot of sense i just don't know if you're a team you know if you're the pistons or the magic or the okay well the okc thunder actually they already got dort they already got dort at the small forward position so yeah man um do i think cam Reddish is worth worth a first round pick not like a lottery pick i would i, I would i would say Top 10 protected first round pick for Cam Reddish. Like, I'm not giving up like a top three pick or something like that to get him on the team, man. So, yeah. Okay, uh, next up we do have, this is just, uh, like, this one's kind of weird, as you guys can see here, um, about the Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum type of pairing. Uh, I don't got much to say about this one. This might actually be a video within itself if there's more talks about it, you know, in the near future. But basically just saying that they think in the next 12 to 18 months, uh, a guy like Jalen Brown could get traded away. I'm still not doing that, man. Um... I, I do think that the Boston Celtics roster around Tatum and Brown is currently poorly built. Um, I also know that, you know, being a big market team like the Celtics, uh, they definitely could sign a big name free agent just like that. But uh, yeah, man, I'm not getting rid of Tatum and Jalen Brown. Like those guys, like that's still an extremely young duo here in the NBA. Um, I don't think getting rid of one of those guys makes you a better team. I think retooling around those guys is kind of the direction you want to go. And I think, uh, hopefully, that's what they end up doing, man. Um, not to say you couldn't get a big haul for Jalen Brown, which could, might be interesting to see what you could put around Jason Tatum with based off doing that. But, uh, yeah, like I said, probably a video within itself for another day. Okay, and then we have two minor ones right here to talk about. Kevin Knox is drawn interest. Um, I don't think he even played this season. Uh, Kevin Knox. Kevin Knox, man, 6'7", small forward, so he's played seven games at three points per game. Um, Kevin Knox, I still think in the right type of circumstance, could be like just like a three-point catch-and-shoot guy in the NBA, maybe like a Reggie Bolix or something like that. So he still is only 22, so I mean, give up two second-round picks for, for him or something like that, take a chance on him. Um, I don't think there's anything, there's any issues with that. Um, I think he kind of fills that same kind of like, what if factor is the Cam Reddish, where Cam Reddish is more proven right now, but also a 22-year-old small forward that can shoot the rock that you could get for a lot less than just a first overall pick like a Cam Reddish, right? So, yeah, maybe if a team will look and do that. And then the final one being Jalen Smith uh, is having some interest from multiple teams around the NBA. I believe wasn't he like the 10th overall pick or something like that by the Phoenix Suns. And uh, obviously the Phoenix Suns have become so amazing that... Uh, He's just not really in the rotation, man. He's played eight games this season. So, yeah, just not really in the rotation. Um, as far as what he is as the NBA player, we haven't seen him too much yet. But uh, what he has tried to do is, like, like, like he's tried about, you know, one three-point attempt per game. Not really knocking that down. Um, when I see Jalen Smith at 6'10", I see him kind of as a more, like, traditional type of power forward in the NBA. Kind of want, want to beat up on the inside, which isn't really sought out too much these days. So, I don't really know what his trade value is. Um, it was million for Sheed. Okay, Rasheed Wallace, bro. Okay, man. But yeah, that's basically what the Jalen Smith. Not much to say about him. Another young player that a team could take a chance on for probably a pretty small amount of trade value, guys. So that's all we have for this video. Hopefully, you guys all enjoyed this. Um, it was actually kind of fun doing it on Basketball Reference here. Just kind of, you know, having a big, huge list to talk about. But hopefully, you guys all enjoyed it. Thank you all so much for watching. And peace out, my friends.